uh, yeah, welcome back. <laughs> Hi, my beautiful friends. Kumusta kayong lahat ngayong araw na to? Today is a Saturday, which means it's now time for our next dose of Bible Chismis on a weekly basis. My name is Mami Loranda of the Mami Hacker PH. If you like reading stories in the Bible but you just don't have time and you also like good kind of cheese meats, well I actually combine them together. Fuse Bible and then cheese me. So we have Bible cheese me. <laughs> I'm Courtney McGraw. If you're interested in listening to Bible stories told in a contemporary storytelling kind of way, well I highly suggest you click on the subscribe button every Saturday. Meron tayong upload ng bagong Bible chismes. Last week, we talked about Balaam, uh, a false prophet. Kahit na false prophet siya, well, he actually was really a prophet and he was blessed by God. Pero dahil meron siyang wickedness, meron siyang selfish and bad intentions, and he thought he can go around, you know, God's blessings for Israel or for the Israelites, it led to his destruction. A very interesting story, yung donkey niya nagsalita. Ang pinakita doon ni Lord, kahit na um, unbeliever ka, may wickedness ka sa puso mo, gagawa at gagawa pa rin si Lord ng way to use you para maging blessing sa mga tao. Today, we have a very interesting character, a renowned person. First in command of the uh, king's army, and the Lord blessed him with many won battles. But you know, the twist there is this man, um, Kalaban ng Israel. Dito pa lang sa Old Testament, pinapakita na ni Lord na um, he can favor anyone, not just his chosen people, the Israelites, but also the, you know, the non-believers. He will choose who he wants to bless to prove his point, authority, to prove his almightiness and his power over all creations. But this person though has a sickness. Let me introduce him first. Hi everyone. Please welcome to the stage Neyman. Woo! Si Neyman. Tinanong ko yung asawa, kailan mo si Neyman? Sabi niya, ah, yun ba yung mahilig humindi? Neyman. Accord me. So, si Naaman, um, isa siyang general of the army. Um, he is second to the king. The, the king is really, really close to him. Meron siyang mataas na katungkulan sa kingdom. However, the kalaban ng mga Israelites. Because, you know, during this time, the Israelites' king, he is very corrupted. So, yung blessing ni Lord, it's not fully with the Israelites, but God gave the blessing um, to the enemies, which is Aram. And the king of Aram, meron siyang a uh, trusted person, and that is Naaman. So, Naaman. Who is Naaman? He holds a really high rank, the army of the king. However, meron siyang isang sickness, and that is leprosy. The whole household of Naaman, of course, alam nila to na merong leprosy ang kanilang bossing. So, there was a war, um, a battle against um, the Israelites. Their army won. They captured a young Israelite girl. Natatalo yung chosen people ni Lord from the anime kingdom. There was this um, Israelite girl na naging servant ng asawa ni Naaman. Hindi sinabi ko ano pangalan ng girl, but sinabi lang na it was an Israelite girl and um, she became the um, handmaiden of the wife of Naaman. During this time, ang mga slaves, or kapag naging held captive ka ng enemy mo, now they can do pretty much what they want with you. Um, kung sasaktan ka nila habang nag-work ka, okay lang yun. They will not get reprimanded for it. And then, you also have no right to talk unless you are spoken to. Yung may yung mga ganong strict um, rules dati na ay hindi ko kailangan opinion mo bakit ka nagkasalita. Wala ka namang silbi. So, your opinion does not matter. Doon na nanggaling yung ganong idea. Yung ganong thinking na I am better than you. 
I am, I hold a higher position than you are or higher rank than you are. So your opinion is invalid. You know, things that makes us feel entitled. Meron siyang origin talaga, yung ganitong klase ng attitude. Which, um, today, still can be seen, right? Yun yung position dati. Very invalid. Yung mga um, opinions ng mga slaves dati. And if you try to speak some form of disrespect, you know, to the higher ranking people, you're, you're not supposed to say anything because you're a slave. Diba? You're like nothing to them. Here, this captive Israelite girl, um, upon of course seeing Naaman and his leprosy, to Naaman's wife, sabi niya, um, if only my master, that's Naaman, if only my master could go to uh, our prophet Elisha, he will be healed of his sickness. In this na magalit, yung wife ni Naaman, she listened to what the Israelite girl said. Naaman heard of this prophet sa Israel. Remember, Israel is their enemy kingdom. Okay? They're very powerful that time over Israel. Yung kingdom nila, yung army nila is more powerful. Then Naaman does not have any issues going to Israel to get healed because, you know, um, hindi naman siya magagalaw dun dahil nga mas makapangyarihan sila at that time over Israel. So he isn't scared. Nakinig si Naaman and he went to his king, the king of Aram. Naaman said, there is a, a prophet, there is someone who can actually heal me of my leprosy. Sa Israel, can I go? So the king gave his blessing to Naaman. Dahil nga, super close siya sa king eh. So, binigyan siya ngayon ng king ng um, gifts. They allow you to go to Israel to get healed. I think siguro si Naaman dahil nga meron siyang mataas na katungkulan. He must have had so many you know, options na at parami na siyang nagawa to heal himself of this leprosy. Hindi siya gumaleng. And also one fun fact ha. During this era, maraming maraming tao ang may leprosy. Pero walang pinagaling ang Panginoon. Sabi nung king, um, sure, sige, punta ka dyan. Uh, para mapagaling ka. Para mas pansinin ka ng hari ng Israel for you to get healed, bring these gifts over to them. Focus, camera, focus. So verse 4, sabi niya, Naaman went to his master and told him what the girl from Israel had said. Sabi ng king of Aram, by all means go. I will send a letter to the king of Israel. So Naaman left, taking with him, o oh, eto ha, pakinggan nyo, 10 talents of silver, 6,000 shekels of gold, and 10 cents of Sorry, 10 sets of clothing. So if you will like, compare that to today, sabi dyan, that's about 750 pounds or 340 kilograms of um, silver. That's talents of silver, ha? That's yung 6,000 shekels, that's about 70 kilograms of gold. And then 10 sets, set, 10 sets of clothing. Yung clothing kasi dati, hindi siya basta-basta. Mahirap siyang gawin, so it also costs a lot of money and if you will convert that to today that would be around four million dollars <sighs> the idea there is grabe yung pag favor ng king of aram kay Naaman, for him to exhaust that much money that much wealth for for Naaman's cure Diba? So, ibig sabihin, super close talaga siya sa king. Okay, pumunta ngayon si um, Naaman dun sa Israel. Of course, it's not, you know, um, uh, isang mga 30 minutes na biyahe, you know. Siyempre, magka-travel sila ng matagal-tagal nito. But they reached Israel, and they went to the king of Israel. Sinabi ngayon ni Naaman dun sa king of Israel, yung pakay niya. Sabi dito sa verse 7, As soon as the king of Israel read the letter, he tore his robes and said, Am I God? Can I kill and bring back to life? Why does this fellow send someone to me to be cured of his leprosy? See how he is trying to pick a quarrel with me. Sabi ng king of Israel, Diyos ba ko? Bakit pinapadala sa akin itong taong may leprosy na to so I can cure him? Because, you know, leprosy is like cancer now. No cure. But known that if a man has leprosy, then that is cursed, a curse from God. And there is no cure unless God heals you or cures you. It's such an impossible task for the king of Israel. And see how entitled he was for thinking na 
siya yung magpapagaling doon sa tao may leprosy, which is Naaman. Nagdrama siya ngayon. If today, yung pag-tour kasi o pag-pagsira ng garment niya, it's like nagdadabog ka. It's like naghahagis ka ng mga plato, sobrang galit mo, nagbasag-basag ka to release your anger. Um, in that way though, the king of Israel, he tore his clothes or he tore his robes and he said, Diyos ba ko? Hindi ko siya mapapagaling. Hindi ko kaya yan. Ganyan. So upon hearing this, si Elisha, Elisha is the prophet. He heard this. Naging ito, ginawa ito ng king. And then sabi ni Elisha, Teka lang, ba't ka nagdadrama dyan? Anong drama yan? King, wag kang maarte. Bakit kailangan mong sirain yung robes mo? Sabi ni Elisha. Pupuntahin mo siya dito sa akin. So that, that person, Naaman, will know that there is a prophet in Israel. Okay? So that's a very short statement from from Elisha. It's actually from um, verse 8. Sabi dyan, when Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his robes, he sent him this message. Why have you torn your robes? Have the man come to me, and he will know there is a prophet in Israel. Very straightforward. Naramdaman niyo ba yung authority doon and yung confidence doon ni Elisha? Because if you are an ordinary person like that, you will not say or speak that way toward your king. But Elisha, he's very bold. He's a man of God and he has full confidence. You felt the full confidence there? Full confidence from the Lord na kaya niyang magsalita directly ng ganoon sa king. Parang imagine niyo, magsalita sa presidente na, dapat ang arte mo, pupuntahin mo yan sa akin para malaman niya na may prophet dito sa Israel. Parang ganoon. Can you imagine that? That kind of confidence, that boldness. God will give us that. Uh, pumunta ngayon doon si Naaman sa bahay ni Elisha. Now, yung pagpunta ni Naaman doon sa bahay ni Elisha is like, alam mo yun, in the modern times, parang naka-motorcade naka kayong lahat. Nakasunod lahat ng mga kotse. Yung may entrada kang grabing-grabing-grabe. Tapos pagdating mo doon, parang kailangan may red carpet and all. Para madaanan ni Naaman papunta doon sa bahay ni Elisha. So Naaman, verse 9, So Naaman went with his horses and chariots and stopped at the door of Elisha's house. <sighs> wow, yes! This is me. This is Naaman. Parang malaman ng mga tao na, Uy, may ano, may mataas na official na pumunta doon sa bahay ni Elisha. Nakita ng mga tao yun, of course. Because there are horses and chariots. Again, in these modern times, it's like cars. Parade of cars. Na pupunta doon sa bahay mo. And then lalabas si Naaman. Ah, red carpet. Wow, oh, yes, this is me. Yeah, Naaman. I'm the leader of the army and all. I have high ranking in our uh, kingdom. Parang ganyan yung dating na gusto niyang ipakita doon kay Elisha. And pagdating doon sa bahay ni Elisha, you know, if 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 something like that happens, diba, pag may, halimbawa, may dumating na special na tao or very high important person sa bahay mo, na ganun ang entrada, what will you do? Diba, lalabas ka and you will welcome, oh, wow, hi, hi, welcome, welcome, pasok kayo, pasok kayo. Diba, ganun yung gagawin mo. Baka mag, magpakatay ka pa ng baboy, maghanda ka ng bongga-bongga. Diba, ganun tayo. Um, we were very hospitable that way, we Filipinos, diba? Normally, that what you, that's what you will do. But Elisha, sabi sa verse, sorry, verse 10, Elisha sent a messenger to say to him, go wash yourself seven times in the Jordan and your flesh will be restored and you will be cleansed. So parang, Okay, so hindi lumabas si Elisha at all. Elisha sent his messenger to meet with Naaman and sabihin lang yung mga words na to kay Naaman. So he will be off and on his way. So, sabi ngayon ni Naaman sa so verse 11, but Naaman went away angry and said, I thought that he would surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God wave his hand over the spot and cure me of my leprosy. Are not Abana and far far the rivers of Damascus better than any of the waters of Israel? Couldn't I wash in them and be cleansed? So he turned and went off in rage. Okay, so, ganun yung nangyari mga friends, ha? Imbis na 
Bonggang, hi, welcome! Yung natanggap ni Naaman, as he was expecting. Ang ginawa ni Elisha, he sent his messenger, and the messenger told Naaman kung ano yung gusto niya iparating. So, parang, it's very rude, di ba? Parang, o oh, yan na, labas ka lang, sabihan mo yung ano, yung tao, ano, ganito yung gawin niya. Parang, wow. Wow. Di ba? But, if you can see, uh, my friends, um, Naaman has a sickness. And I think that sickness is not just physical, the leprosy, but he also has a sickness inside, and that is pride. That sickness is the one sickness that God wants to heal. What is the cure? He needs humbling. Naaman went over to the man of God day. Eh? God is sovereign. God is all-powerful. God is, you know, if, if that's the case, diba? God knows everything. God is all-powerful. He's almighty. He knows our past. He knows our present. And He knows what will happen to us in the future. Right? Now, if that is the is a fact, then, pag sinabi ni Lord na, hindi, ang gawin mo ganito, anak, okay? You have to go this path because this path is the right way for you. Ito yung path na you will be blessed more than going your own path na, ano ba yun? It will lead you somewhere else. If, you know, if, if He knows what's going to happen in our future, then, bakit hindi tayo sumunod dun sa gusto niya? But this is also my struggle. And I'm pretty sure that it's also a struggle of most of us. Obedience. Diba? Why is it so difficult to obey? Alam na nga ni Lord yung mangyayari sa atin sa future eh. Bakit hindi pa natin sundin yung gusto niya for us? Right? So, there's really an issue of, of, of you know, obedience and humbling. Diba? Kasi isipin natin, hmm, bakit, bakit dyan? It, this is a better way, yo. I mean, I, I already computed, oh, ganito yung mangyayari sa akin, um, if I do this, this will happen, this will happen. You know, and, and sometimes, that kind of attitude is us limiting God, a human capability, when in fact, God is almighty, He is better than us, He's more powerful than us, He created us even. He knows everything. Tayo bang human? Do we know everything? No, we don't. But, God gives us the power. In this case, you know, si Naaman, he said, you know yung gagawin ko? Um, talaga? Bakit sa Jordan pa? Eh, ang dami namang mas magagandang rivers sa Israel. Bakit sa Jordan pa? Why did he say that? The river of Jordan is actually not, hindi siya sobrang ganda river. Ma Maputi ang river of Jordan. Hindi mo gugustuhin maglulublub dun. Dahil maputi nga siya. The fact that hindi talaga siya nilabas ni Elisha para i-greet. It's also God's way of correcting Naaman's pride. Maybe some people would say that if, if I go to um, a certain church service, kailangan merong ah, wow feeling ako maramdaman. But you know, God doesn't work that way. Okay? Sometimes, inisip natin, ay, parang mapagaling ako ni Lord. I mean, um, yung, yung sign na hinihim mo kay Lord, parang may grand ilaw na mag-shine over sa'yo. May mararamdaman kang chills in your bones. May parang wow entourage. And that's what we're expecting all the time, right? Um, Lord, siya na ba? Siya na ba? And we're expecting na, ay, may malalaglag na parang bato. Tapos may nakalagay, I love you. Hello? And then yung pangalan ng, ng crush mo or whoever that is. You know, most of the time, we expect so much, so much sign. We expect too much. That is also one sickness that God wants to cure. For Naaman, ayaw ni Lord na i-feed pa ng husto yung pride ni Naaman. Kasi sabi ni Lord, you know, Naaman, you need humbling. Babaan mo yung pride mo. Kailangan alamin mo yung lugar mo. Because I am a sovereign God. I am almighty. I am all-powerful. I gave you your victories. The battles that you won, that's because of me. So stop glorifying yourself. And I need you to humble yourself before me. 
you have to know who is in charge you have to know who's in authority and that is God and that part Naaman really needs correcting and yun yung actual sickness niya sabi ni ni Naaman kadiri kaya dyan sa Jordan masyadong maputik dyan eh tsaka bakit hindi lang ba si Elisha I thought he's gonna call on God magpray over siya sa akin oh, yes yes Lord heal him heal him walang ganong mangyari Eh, hindi yun yung in-expect ni Naaman. Simple lang yung instructions. Seven times, lulubulub ako sa maputik na river na yan. And then I'll be healed. Are you sure? Are you sure? No. Diba? Verse 13. Naaman's servants went to him and said, My father, if the prophet had told you to do some great thing, would you not have done it? How much more than when he tells you, wash and be cleansed? Ang simple-simple na nga lang yan, father, sabi ng servants niya. The servants try to convince him, Sige na, sumunod na lang po kayo. Because, very easy naman yung pinapagawa sa inyo eh. Diba? Parang gusto niya sabihin, yung mas mahirap nga na task, gagawin mo para gumaling ka, yan pa kayang maglulublub ka lang oh. Lulublub ka lang ni eh. Sa maputik na ano, na, na river. Seven times. Diba? Kung sinabi ni Lord, oh, pumatay ka na kailangan seven lions, kailangan skin them, and all that great you know, dangerous things. You will surely do that. But here, the Lord is just giving you very simple instructions. Gawin yun na lang po. So you will be healed. So si Naaman naman, sige na, gawin natin yan. So ngayon, pumunta ngayon si Naaman doon sa River of Jordan. And he did as he was told. So before he dipped, kailangan naman na magubad. Of course, the servants would see him. Um, and he dipped. One time, two, three, four, five times dip, and then ahon again, and then six time. Alam niyo yun, siguro bawat, bawat lublub niya, tas bawat ahon niya. Tas makita ng mga servants na, oh my gosh, it's not working. Oh my gosh, nakakahiya, friend. Siguro ganun yung inisip ng mga servants niya. No? Oh my god, lulubo siya sa putikan, oh my gosh. Kasi alam niyo noon, um, I think even now, imagine mo, high-ranking official who bad before you naglublub sa putikan seven times. Diba parang, oh my god, nakakahiya. I mean, and, and that is like the echo of the world. Alam mo yun? When God tells you to do something very humbling, you know, the people around you will start to talk and they were like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, what's she doing? But this is the Lord's instructions. Seven times, dip yourself in. You will be healed. So, okay, seventh time. Lumablub siya, umahon siya ulit. And you know what it says here? Verse 14. So he went down and dipped himself in the Jordan seven times, as the man of God had told him. And his flesh was restored, and he became clean. Okay, so nawala yung leprosy niya. At hindi lang yun. Clean like that of a young boy. So, nagmukha pa siyang bata. So, like, wow! Wow! And he was, wow, this is so amazing! And then, when Naaman saw this, hindi siya agad umuwi. Dumiretso siya dun sa bahay ni Elisha. Naaman and all his attendants went back to the man of God. He stood before him. This time, wala ng chariots, wala ng horses. Just him, cleansed. Now I know that there is no God in all the world except in Israel. Please accept now a gift from your servant. Sabi dito ni Naaman. And so, at this point in time, my friends, Naaman became humble. Nawala na yung pride, nawala yung chariots, nawala yung horses, nawala yung I am Naaman. Wala na yun. He is humbled now before the man of God. Please, please accept all these gifts. Remember all the gifts na sinabi kanina, yung worth four million dollars na gifts. Ayan, inoffer na ngayon ni Naaman kay Elisha. The prophet answered, verse 16, As surely as the Lord lives, whom I serve, I will not, I will not accept a thing. And even though Naaman urged him, he refused. Of course, 
Naman was very grateful eh. Sige na po, tanggapin niyo na po. Maraming maraming salamat po. With all humility. Yan, sinabi ni Naman. But Elisha said no. 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 Sabi ni Lord, wag tanggapin. No. Verse 17, if you will not, said Naman, please let me, your servant. O, oh, ayan. Ayan na, humbled na siya. So, imbis na, I am Naaman. I am the leader. I'm a general. Parang ganyan of an army. This time, sabi ni Naaman, I am now your servant. Servant of the man of God. Diba? So, he, this time, humbled himself. Please let me, your servant, be given as much earth as a pair of mules can carry. For your servant will never again make burnt offerings and sacrifices to any other god but the Lord. Merong ibang Diyos si Naaman. But after this healing from his leprosy, sabi niya, pahingi na lang po ng mga lupa ninyo dito. Gagawa ko ng altar and gagamit ka, I mean, I will never make any burnt offerings anymore to any other gods but the Lord. So, yung altar na gagawin ko through this, you know, um, earth na makukuha ko from here, I will use that altar to offer to the Lord who healed me. Verse 18 though, sabi niya, But may the Lord forgive your servant for this one thing. When my master enters the temple of Rimon to bow down, and he is leaning on my arm, and I bow there also. When I bow down in the temple of Rimon, may the Lord forgive your servant for this. So, because Naaman is very close to the king, and the king is worshipping another god. So, yung king ay nakikling sa kanya when he is, kay Naaman, when nakikling kay Naaman, when he is worshipping his their own god. Ay pasintabi na agad si Naaman na, he, I'm so sorry if isama ako ng, ng boss ko para mag-worship, kasi nakakling siya sa akin. Pag nagbaw siya, magbabaw na rin ako definitely. So, I hope the Lord forgives me um, by doing this. Now, what does this mean? Naaman now here is an, a, new, a new believer in God, a new believer in the Lord. Now, um, in a snap, he said, "Yes, yes, I will. I will definitely um, be of service to the Lord." There is a certain transition, and that transition yun yung hinihingi ng tawad ni Naaman, kasi like us. Diba? Um, nakilala natin ang Panginoon. Pero, what if um, yung trabaho mo is you know, going against what the Lord wants? Diba? Parang, hindi ko siya may iyon agad eh. So, pwede bang um, while transitioning, please, Lord, guide me, help me um, para makaalis ako dito. And so, I can live um, you know, and walk on the path that you want me to walk on. So, there's a transition phase, diba? And the Lord will definitely work on us through that transition phase. Unlike what most religious leaders will tell us na, hindi, kailangan ganito, 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 ganito. Nililimit natin si Lord sa standards na yun eh. But the Lord is not like that. The Lord is a forgiving, He's a loving God. Forgiving God. And of course, during this transition time, He will allow us, sabi sa verse 19, Go in peace, Elisha said. No more arguments. Na hindi eh, sabi ni Lord, hindi eh. Diba? Um, you already believed in God. God healed you. So, bakit anjan ka pa rin? Bakit magko-confirm ka pa rin sa, sa ways mo? No. At this point in time, there will be definitely a transition. And in that process of transitioning, God said, go in peace. Diba? He will let us continue on. And as we continue on, bit by bit, the Lord will work in us. And He will, you know, bit by bit, lead us to the right path. So we can go um, on the path that He wants us to walk on. Diba? Ang sarap-sarap nun. Knowing that God is very forgiving. God is very loving. Will you know, give you this much grace. So, dito pa lang nakita ko na yung grace ni Lord eh. Then, sa New Testament, 
mas grabe pa yung love niya, mas grabe pa yung grace na ipinakita niya because he sacrificed his own son, Jesus, para lang sa grace na yan, na hindi lang yung chosen, alam niyo yun, hindi lang chosen people ang kayang i-bless ni Lord, kundi everyone else because he loves every one of us. And dito, oh my gosh, grabe yung display of grace, display of love, of forgiveness na binigay ng Lord sa atin. Pero may plot twist. Here's the plot twist. Sabi dyan, After Naaman had traveled some distance, Gehazi, the servant of Elisha, the man of God, said to himself, My master was too easy on Naaman. This Aramean, by not accepting from him what he brought, as surely as the Lord lives, I will run after him and get something from him. So, nasilaw si Gehazi sa kayamanan na daladala ni Naaman. Gehazi hurried after Naaman. When Naaman saw him running toward him, he got down from the chariot. O, diba? Usually, ang mga taong ito, atong mga officials na to, they will not go down from the horse to talk to someone. Especially a servant. Servant siya ni Elisha eh. Tapin kita from my horse. And I will look down on you. But here, no. With all humility, Naaman went down from the horse and he spoke to Gehazi. Sabi ngayon ni Naaman, everything is all, um, um, is everything all right? Sabi niya kay Gehazi. Sabi ni Gehazi, yes, yes, okay lang. Okay lang ang lahat. Everything is fine, yeah, but, um, kasi, um, ganito yun, uh, Naaman. My master sent me to say, two young men from the company of the prophets have just come to me from the hill country of Ephraim. Please give them a talent of silver, and two sets of clothing. So, nahingi siya ng pera. At ng mga damit. By all means, yan, sabi ni Naaman, by all means, take two talents. He urged Gehazi to accept them and then tied up the two talents of silver in two bags with two sets of clothing. And then, may mga servants na sumama kay Gehazi para dalihin yung mga yun and dinala yun doon sa um, sa bahay. He went in and stood before his master, Elisha. Sabi niya ni Elisha, Oh, Gehazi, saan ka galing? Where have you been? Servant didn't go anywhere. Ay, wala po. Hindi naman po ako umalis. Dito lang ako. But of course, Elisha being the man of God, he knows that Gehazi is lying. O sabi niya dito, Was my spirit not with you? When the man got down from his chariot to meet you? Is this the time to take money or to accept clothes, olive groves, vineyards, flocks, herds, or manservants and maidservants? Naaman's leprosy will cling to you and to your descendants forever. Then Gehazi went from Elisha's presence and he was leprous, as white as snow. Okay, <laughs> that's a plot twist. Gehazi, 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 Gehazi. Nasilaw siya and he asked money from Naaman when Elisha was told by God not to. Makikita na naman natin dito yung classic wickedness, classic selfish intentions ng mga tao which leads to one's destruction. Hindi na naman sumunod Sabi kasi ni Lord, oh, huwag kayong tatanggap, ha? O, since hindi sumunod si Gehazi, ayan. Siya talo yung nagkaroon ng leprosy. Yung leprosy ni Naaman lumipat sa kanya. And hindi lang sa kanya. Sabi ni Lord, you know, all throughout your descendants, you will have leprosy. So, there you have it. What is our takeaway here sa story na to? Hindi lang physical ang sickness. Nakailangang mahil sa atin. It is also our attitude. Diba sabi nga, um, the Holy Spirit, God, will help us in renewing our minds. Diba? In renewing our attitudes. Because that is also a kind of sickness that will destroy us. Pride is, um, destroys a lot of people. It destroys families. It destroys friendships. It destroys governments. In this story, God really made a strong, strong point. Kahit sino ka pa, 
kahit unbeliever ka, kahit mataas ang position mo sa gobyerno, kahit sino ka pa, I can definitely heal you of your physical sickness and your internal sickness which is pride. Lord, you're really, really powerful and we thank you so much for teaching us lessons after lessons after lessons for being oh. patient with us, giving us so many chances. Such a wonderful testimony. Ang unbeliever, kayang pagalingin ni Lord. What more ikaw who professed and believed in the Lord. Let's let's rest in that fact that kahit sino ka pa, especially now that Jesus already made that sacrifice to redeem us all from our sins. Let's let's take advantage of that. Alam mo yun? Because the Lord is giving us all the chances that we have here in this world so that we are prepared to be with Him in His kingdom. There is nothing for us to be proud of at all. Actually, wala talaga. But we can be proud in Jesus. Magatago tayo ngayon sa righteousness and sa holiness ng ating Panginoon. And in that, through that, we can be proud and we can proudly say that I am saved because God saved me. Amen. Amen. Ang ganda ng message ngayon, no? Um, I hope that that story spoke to you. All we need right now is really humility and to be humble before the Lord. Great blessings await those who obey Him. Um, if Elisha went out, if feed lang nun yung pride. If um, yung, yung pride ni Naaman and um, yung paglublob sa, sa putikan, it's really a way of humbling yourself. Eh. It's gross, right? But for someone with high ranking na naglublob sa putikan, it's really a humbling experience, right? Magpapakababa ka. Um, kung saan yung mga, siguro ibang animals, diba naliligo sa putikan? So, Diba? And then, the fact that hindi tinanggap ni Elisha yung gift from Naaman, that's a lot of money. If tinanggap ni Elisha yung gift ni Naaman, baka ma-feed lang yung pride. Ay, hindi. Nagbayad naman ako dyan. So, nagbayad ako sa kanya, kaya ako gumaling. So, pwede niyang sabihin yun. But no, Elisha did not accept it kasi ayaw niya nga i-feed pa yung pride ni Naaman. And that's what God will do to us eventually. Darating sa point na he will really humble us drastically. And hindi na niya ififeed yung pride natin. Diba? Because it happens in real life eh. Um, na, ay hindi, nag-aabot naman ako ng pera dyan. So, you will think higher of yourself than that person. Because you're giving gifts, you're giving something. Diba? But, you know, here, that's actually one way of God's, um, that's actually God's one way of telling us na, hey, stop. Stop being so proud. Humble yourself. Humble yourself. You will be a better person if you are humble. That's one part of me that I need working on. There's a lot of places to work on in me so I can renew my mind fully. And um, I pray to the Lord to really help me, you know, become a better person for Him. And that is my prayer for you too. Um, whoever you are watching this video, um, I hope that this story speaks to you the way it spoke to me. I hope you were blessed as well. And I hope that there is seed, uh, a positive seed that will grow in you. I'm saying that the Lord will humble you because He wants you to be on the right path. Let's try to obey Him. Let's pray for our hearts to be obedient to Him and to be humble before Him because ang gift ng Lord for us, it's very rewarding in the end. So, that's the story of Naaman. It's actually a very beautiful story, isn't it? Diba, wow, like for the first time in, you know, the history, while we're making history, in the history of the Bible chismes, hindi, hindi pa ngit yung naging ending ng story. It's a very beautiful, well, for Gehazi, yes, it was pangit na ending. He didn't die, but he had leprosy. But still, you know the the power displayed by God in Naaman, it's wow, amazing, right? Hindi lang physical ailments, 
physical sickness yung nakure sa kanya, but also his mind, his pride, it was gone. He was humble, right? So it's pretty amazing. And I hope you were blessed too. God is our ultimate healer. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching this video. Um, I hope that you know you take away that blessing from the Lord. Um, so I hope to see you again next Saturday for our next dose of Bible Chismes uh, on a weekly basis. Choose to love, choose to be kind, and always remember that God loves you so very much. God bless. Have a good day. Bye!